What's up guys, it's Poir, and finally, here it is, the second form of Bulldozer 2.0. With the power of Graces and minus one, the build kills like twice as fast as the first video, and with a certain combo, you can infinitely stunlock humans, draining their spirit bar in one use of Thunderous Impact. And now we leave fire behind to add poison punches to double the damage. This is likely the best build in the game, it kinda has no weaknesses, it's got defense, spear damage, and now, offense to pummel everything to death. With that said though, it will be hard to make, just due to the trash 5 star drop rate in graces, but it's a goal to aim for if you care about dabbling with min max setups before our DLC, which is like 4 months away. So if you enjoyed the build, make sure to leave a like, let's get 1000 likes, and I'll make another build that isn't gooting, I promise. So yeah. Build all, start all. But quickly, if you want a starter version, go check out my original video that can be assembled with your first playthrough gear. And yeah, use that to transition into this. But let's start off with the weapon. Should come at no surprise, still Gouda Blade, cause crazy. Thunderous Impact is the reason to use this. It does massive spear damage to enemies. It's got quick normal attacks. And if you happen to get Whirlwind Advance as a second skill, then you'd have a really good fast second option skill to use on top. Try to get a 5 star if you can, otherwise 4 star is fine. You can farm the like father like son mission for the best chance at getting a 5 star. Although 5 star drop rates are garbage, but yeah. For the stats, special melee attack power and lightning enchant are the key effects. Melee giving you more raw damage, pretty much best in slot for every single weapon, and you can go either lightning or earth enchant, your choice. The status not only gets us more spirit damage on the enemy, but also adds a debuff for our punch. And the purple stat is kind of whatever, I already cover a ton of other effects, so slow is just another debuff for our punch. And lastly, toxic power, which you can lose if you only got the 4 star version of the blade. Now for the armor, for the grace, we are using the full grace of Ling Bao set. You get spear vulnerability, power drop on wizardry, and damage amplification, and the final bonus, principle of Ling Bao, at 3 debuffs is around 22% damage increase, making it pretty much the best damage set in the game, and you want the set on everything but the sword and one armor piece. The next set is two piece strategist of genius, with one being on armor and the other being accessory. I have two setups where I use perfect restoral and the other one uses life wither, so this allows me to get power drop outside of punching, boosting survivability, and frankly, this is kind of the best you can do with graces as every other two piece bonus sucks. As in order for you to even activate this, you need one armor piece, one accessory, of which there's only a few sets that have that option, and minus one set bonus effect. This is very rare, but if you watch my luck build video, I show a method on how to get a guaranteed four star crossbow, which you can repeat that mission over and over, and those can frequently come with graces and can roll this effect as well. This is basically the Yasukani from Neo. Without this, you cannot run both these sets together, but minus one can appear on weapons and armor, but ranged weapons is best in slot since many sets don't have that as a gear option. But if you don't have it, just scrap genius set to wear full Ling Bao, no biggie. Before the ranged weapon, you want toxic power, as that does add to your total toxic power, boosting the poison punch. For armor, just kind of copy the effects you see. Helmet can roll power gain, so you want that. Melee attack damage actually affects punch as well as your gooting blade, so best in slot. And then toxic and shock affliction to help apply shock. Replace this with earth if we're going earth or you can ditch shock on the weapon and just go for melee attack damage, I guess. But status is better overall, I feel. Because enemies get stunned on status application, so yeah, that helps out both offensively and defensively. For accessories, kind of the same thing, just look for similar effects as the armor, and if going genius, then you will have to use the set bonus dice. For stats, here's the near 150 version, I was too lazy to get 150, but yeah, 150 is the max level, 30 wood, 30 fire, and rest into metal. Now, if you happen to get a lean bow set on heavy armor, if you want more damage reduction, you can wear that to be more tanky, but you will have to invest into Earth to be, be agility, so keep that in mind. Otherwise, just avoid red agility and pump up metal for the remaining points. For special effects total, you can see what I got here, and I gain a lot of those symbol thingies. So a lot of buffs and a lot of debuff symbols. It's a really good mix of bullcrap we can do passively by fatal strikes, deflecting, etc. And for Divine Guardian, we're still sticking with La Snake. Applies poison and a lot of debuffs for a punch to deal big damage and boosts our spirit damage for gooting, so mm, kind of best in slot. The other option is Ying Long for uh, revive. And finally, the last cherry on top, Wizardry Harry. The top slot will be Perfect Restoral or Life Wither. 
Restoral is great against stinky humans who like to throw red attacks at bay, and Life Wither is just extra damage and a debuff against yokai, or demons I guess, why not? Then we got Amplified Damage. With Restoral, the downside is kind of prevented briefly, and yeah, free damage, just don't get hit. <laughs> then we got Molten Calamity Thorn, aka Punch. This does huge damage depending on the number of debuffs on an enemy, that enemy near or over 5k damage, scoffing at 2k damage weenies with little martial arts. The downside is it removes all the debuffs, but like I said in the stats page, we got a lot of automatic debuffs, so getting the back on enemies is pretty easy without ruining the flow. This is why trying to add poison spells to delay effects is irrelevant, since we'll just punch and lose them all anyways. And yeah, the damage of this is doubled if we use Overpowered Burst. So the game plan is to use Gooting to break spirit, then buff with OP, and on wake up we punch them freely and safely. Initially I was going to do a dedicated build for the spell, but turns out the punch range and animation sucks, so yeah, the only realistic time you'll use this is if they're out of spirit. And yeah, that is the thorn punch. However, however, overpowered burst has a secondary, probably unintentional effect. Not only does it buff damage, but it seems to buff spirit damage, meaning our thunderous impact can now deal like twice as much spirit damage as before, which leads to this, infinite stun lock. You will have to forego using Calamity, but you can pretty much lock down humans indefinitely, casting OB when they're exhausted, fatal strike, wait around one second, then hit them with a normal attack, and then go into bulldoze and boom, they're out of spirit again. Rinse, repeat. And you can add a punch towards the end as a finale. So yeah, broken. Take that humans, you dirty beings. And that's the build, Bulldozer 2.0. Hope you guys enjoy it, and if you did, make sure to leave a like. But there's one important warning I have to give you guys regarding this build. Historically, Team Ninja doesn't like popular, doesn't like strong. And if you've seen YouTube filled with videos and my own using Gooting, well, you can imagine it's pretty popular. And it stands out greatly from the other martial arts and effectiveness, which they're all trash. Okay, I'm over exaggerating a bit, but yeah, most skills are not good. And now with this overpowered burst interaction, it's even more powerful. So there is a high chance it'll be nerfed. And once it's nerfed, all these builds kind of fall apart. So just keep that in mind. A Sword of Night and Flame nerf could be coming is all I'm saying. But luckily, if you guys like the video, I'll make more builds so we'll have other options. But yeah. Use it till you lose it. And comment down below your thoughts on the build or gooting. Is it too good? Or are other martial arts just absolute garbanzo compared to spells and gooting and should be buffed? There seems to be a vast difference between this and the ice spell and other stuff. So yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts. And if you don't want to miss a video, subby wubby for more. Whoa, dong. Epicness.